Hi, colleagues. Welcome to Episode 17 of We Will Get Through This, Transformative Leadership for Disruptive Times. And it's my pleasure today with be my, with my co-host, Scott. And Scott, how are you today? How's it going? John, I'm doing well. Um, what is this day? <laughs> I don't even know what day it day is X. anymore. <laughs> day 43, Friday. Here we are. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's good to see you. Good to see you, too. Um, for the listeners, I just want to remind you that the, the purpose of this podcast, as we've set it out, is to reflect and share and create opportunities to really affect change for school leaders in Australia and really school leaders around the world. And we are really pleased today to have Tim McCallum join us. And Tim is the executive director for close to 350 schools across the region. So, Tim, wonderful to see you. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Good to see you both. Hi, John. Hi, Tim. Thank you for coming along today. I know you're really busy and all of your leaders are really full on in trying to create this transition from what we've been doing to back to whatever we were doing into whatever we will be doing. <laughs> so, Tim, let, let's talk about that a little bit. Per, perhaps before we, we get into what you're seeing and what you're, you know, how you're um, pushing the, the kind of thinking that we're, we're hoping to see out there, talk to us a little bit about your work. We'd love to hear a bit. You, you were describing the, the scale of your, your reach in terms of the schools. Talk to the yeah. audience a bit about that. So, so across our state of New South Wales, there's 2,200 schools. Um, there are six people like me, um, probably five better, but uh, we're all doing our best. Um, and we each have about 350 schools. Um, that's a combination of um, primary, uh, high school, uh, as well as um, our special purpose schools, environmental ed centres um, and preschools. And so there's a whole uh, mix of schools. On my team, I have 17 directors. Those directors each hold a, around a responsibility for around 20, um, 20 specific schools, and they work very closely with their principals. So their connection with their principals, their support of their principals, and the edge of accountability with their principals uh, really governs their work. So um, as a team, we meet, uh, we, we cover, as you indicated, a very wide and and sort of, uh, you know, uh, unique landscape in Australia um, from the Blue Mountains, uh, it's a famous landmark, obviously, uh, through and up uh, to, to some of our more coastal areas and, and the wonderful area of Newcastle as well. So, um, yeah, quite a diverse role, uh, a fantastic team. My team is um, uh, just amazing purpose and spirit. In, in the work they do and they inspire um, each day. And uh, we, we have mantras that we talk about, about, uh, you know, pursuing excellence endlessly and having uh, what I love to dot, dub uh, grit, steel and determination in our work. So we do that and we stand alongside our principles uh, in, in delivering that. Fantastic. It's wonderful having you here. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for inviting me. John, can you hear us, John? Yeah, I'm good. We just had a little internet interruption, which I think is the new normal as well. Yes. Tim, across that uh, network of schools, which is pretty vast, you have the opportunity before the COVID-19 reality to be driving some change in each of those schools in their own way. A lot of that pedagogical change, attempting to get more kids actively involved in their learning so that they accomplish the you know, the syllabus that's required, but also even more than that, get them ready for an exciting new future. That's been put on a back burner in some ways, because what we've been trying to do is transition to maintaining some semblance of school from home, as well as now as we're trying to transition back over the next weeks ahead and around the world in some version of that is happening everywhere. I think last week's got 93% of all kids on planet Earth were not in school. Um, mm -hmm. That should have been or, or could have been. What's your biggest wish or worry about this transition back and what happens to that reality of change? Do you think it'll continue to think it's on hold? Does it wait till 2021? Where, where do you think we are? Yeah, a uh, good question. We in New South Wales, we have a phased uh, return that, that our minister and premier have announced. So that um, kicks off in a couple of weeks in, in full flight. But even now, we've got principals uh, working very, very collegially and uh, collaboratively with their staffs and, and with their directors uh, on my team around how this might look and what sort of structure 
uh, they will take. Um, the fears and hopes, I guess, uh, have, have varied. Um, there, there is certainly a belief that our year 12, our final year of school, is a really important one, um, obviously, but how do you engage those students um, and bring them back? The, the value of face-to-face -face teaching, though, I guess underpins it all, uh, John, as you indicated, and um, I, I guess returning to some of that, but equally taking the lessons uh, that we currently are learning and hearing. Like, for example, um, there's some interesting things emerging, and um, I, I know you've got an international audience, but um, the Australian concept of mateship and uh, is a really uh, strong one at the moment because we're seeing some extraordinary things happening uh, that we would love to take with us uh, beyond. Uh, for example, you know, students um, in online learning, you know, assisting each other, helping each other. It's okay, Miss. I can I can show John how to do this. Um, Scott and I met last night, and he now understands this. It's okay. So there's some lovely sense of that but equally there's a yearning for that to return because as people uh, find that connection um, it, it's something um, that perhaps they've missed more than they thought so I think um, we stand to benefit from um, some positivity in that space um, the other big one that I'm hearing and seeing from principals that I interact with is around um, students that are perhaps a little more vulnerable or, or disconnected in class. And there's lovely stories of many of them now, perhaps in a forced independence, having to take a little bit more ownership for their learning, uh, a little bit more adult style learning um, and independence. And, you know, um, th there's a, a lovely edge of uh, individualising, but Equally, there's a lovely edge of personalising that learning. So I think um, that's exciting because um, had you walked in and said um, to the unions and the principal um, associations and government and said, look, we've got this great idea, we're going to put everyone at home to work and we're going to put everyone on computers and trust me, you know, it'll work, um, the, the reach and the, um, and the dynamic work of principals with their communities and, you know, the great support of parents has been a, a huge thing for us. Um, like we, we are running at the moment, coming back from a, a, a term break at about 15% um, of attendance. And those, those students, um, our mantra is that we, we turn away no student. We accommodate all regardless of profession or background. Um, and what we're seeing is parents supporting the schools, parents valuing uh, the connection they've had with with um, with their teachers. You know, we've had, we had teachers and a lot of them having a bit of fun, you know, online talking about how much they miss their students. Um, these are things that are precious, you know, and um, equally students, um, you know, be it Easter hat parades or Mother's Day stalls coming up or whatever, where there's this great uh, sense of community. So I think um, through the isolation, ironically, we're probably being forced together somewhat as well. So that's a, a really appealing thing. The, the other thing that is really interesting is for a long time, every school system in, in the world has agonised about student attendance. And, um, you know, if we could only get them from the beach on a sunny day to, to the lessons. And um, what we're seeing is, I think, a, a developing understanding of the importance of attendance at school. And I, I would love to see that... Um, take a firmer foothold. We, we in our system have a number of targets that we uh, will, will go into full flight with in the coming years. And they, they not only touch on that student wellbeing edge um, as much as, as attendance, uh, as much as academia. And um, we're sort of thinking that this is a sort of thing that can, can shape us. And, you know, we got lots of little examples. I was talking to a principal yesterday um, at a hospital school and she was talking about how the online will just unlock so many possibilities in terms of accessing more students in that very unique setting. And, you know, a, a principal of a sports high school who was talking fondly of so much more they can do now on the road and in travel situations that, you know, perhaps has always been there, but perhaps less... Uh, less energised as it is now. So there's great possibilities there, John. I think um, we're, we've, we've got a lot there. But, you know, one of, one of the ones I think that is completely, um, you know, in some ways unsurprising, but completely awesome 
is the connection between teachers. Um, we are seeing, be they on site on campus or, or off site, you know, we're seeing um, teachers collaborating and genuinely and authentically connecting around teaching and learning programming, around problem solving. You know, the government throws online at them. They've, they've solved that. They've got thought thinking. They're, they're curing that. Um, we come to them and say, look, we need a phased return. Can you whip up some timetables? We know you're on annual leave, but can you do this for us? You know, the, the, the majestic work of collaboration and genuine and authentic connection has seen, I think, some real spirit arise in schools and settings that, that was always there, I'm sure, but it's just taken a different form and a different um, layer of energy, you know, and it's exciting to, to hear that and to see that. Um, you know, we, we were able to give folk a, a, a development day or two, and I'm sure other systems have done similarly, but, um, you know, and you, you hear the most gorgeous things, you know, like in one of our most disadvantaged communities, teachers writing individual letters to students with their work packs because a lot of them don't have or their parents won't support, you know, internet long term in the family budget, Um you know, we've got this remarkable um, COVID task force team that is multi-pronged across our system, you know, who've provided online learning, uh, professional learning on demand, dongles, um, digital, you know, devices of all manner, um, a systems approach to, to everything from caring for specific needs, uh, Aboriginal students, um, and just um, this awesome hub that parents can lock into, you know, as a system we've connected with uh, local TV as well, the ABC, so as to flavour and colour the, the, the days. Um, you know, people are thinking differently. Like this week we've had um, some of our local um, media stars and um, sports stars join, you know, on podcasts and conferences and so on online. So there's some people thinking differently there's uh, the fears maybe a little edge towards the overload perhaps factor um how do we filter all this good stuff and position it because you wouldn't be asking someone to come in and, and talk to students at 8 15 in a normal school day but perhaps that works online um yeah so we've had uh, a lot of things and, and you you alluded to earlier john the simplicity of the curriculum uh we have a curriculum review uh, as you're well aware and um there is a lot of talk of a freeing up of uh, ingenuity and uniqueness and um, no less resolve and, and purpose and energy around the work, but um, this great sense that, that you can you can do this, you know, and you can do it um, in a different way and yet not compromise learning. And, and of course, our, our maybe a fear for the system, but, but I, I think it'll be interesting is you take away a national exam like NAPLAN and uh, you wonder, um, is it, will this improve results or will this affect results? And, um, yeah, so, so principals and, and staff are very cognizant of that and the impact there that, that could be. So returning to face-to-face, -face, fantastic. Um, not, uh, not, not taking the parachute off too early, John, um, would be important to time that right. Um, and then you know, getting ourselves to a position where we stand alongside our principals as they try and do this uniquely into their local context. Yeah, fantastic. Tim, um, what you just did was highlight in, in many ways what this podcast is all about. So it's, it's really about how are people doing and thinking and um, planning in new ways. And honestly, John, we could probably do about six podcasts based on each of those ideas that yes. Tim just threw out. But um, I want to come back to you, your notion of collaboration and collegiality and the fact that we're seeing much more of that in schools. And um, a lot of times that gets pushed aside, we've talked about. It gets pushed aside as we try to rate and rank and sort. And competition seems to trump collaboration a lot of times in, in, our, in our education systems in Western societies. Um, and what you've, what you've just put forward is a laundry list of the really positive things that are happening. And, and I think my question would be, what can we do? What can you do in your role? What can the system do to ensure that these positive things that we're seeing remain? Really, I, I, I hate to think of, of this, these, these powerful ideas 
falling by the wayside. Yeah. I think there's a, a challenge for all leaders, um, you know, that there's a mindset, firstly, that, um, you know, in our team, we talk about if it's, if it's not hard, it's not high performance. If it's not difficult, um, it's meant to be difficult. Um, and if you accept that, um, you know, to unleash the greatness of others, you've got to take a, a stance where, you know, it's a little bit like that, that notion of anti-fragility that when you put things under high intensity and high, uh, high pressure, and can you come through the disorder with a, with a growth and a stronger, um, you know, not just resilience to fend it off, but a, a, a genuine strength. I think the, the mindset becomes important. Um, therefore, um, Scott, I think um, if, you, if you've got that can-do optimism about what you do, firstly, and that is through your team, and that is then communicated through your principles and there's a connection and there's a belief, I guess, and a trust that this can happen. I think that, that we sometimes underestimate that. We sometimes will assume that that, oh, of course, we're all thinking like that, but I think we have to, as leaders, articulate that a little bit. You know, you know, we, we talk about um, staying calm and composed and doing pain well, you know, um, there's going to be tough times and it, it doesn't get easier. You just get better at doing it, you know? So, um, so I think, I think in the leadership mindset for all of us, we have to have those things um, really front and center. We also, I think in order to do that and get that collaboration, we have to um, keep up our, our, our praise and our recognition and acknowledgement. I, I suspect that it's easy to get bogged down in the in, in the minute, and I, I guess that's what I was articulating earlier. That this there's a there's a lovely humanising of this. There's a great sense of um, perhaps care forced upon us, obviously, but equally maybe just rising to the surface um, through how we do it. So I, I would I would speak to those things as almost like a backdrop that if you have the right leadership ethic and you have the right view and outlook, it's going to be easier for all of us to then say, radio, this collaboration is important because, you know, like fundamentally, we all want to be part of something great, no matter what it is. You know, we want to be part of something great. And I think the challenge has been that we've we've sought that out. Like even in my team, we we thought we were being really revolutionary about two week, uh, two months ago. Um, get the time frame right. Two months ago, we went from Skype to Teams, and we thought we were so good. And we actually got people saying, "Oh, you know, your team's so progressive." Well, within about five seconds, you know, we're into Zoom, and we're we're picking holes in this and that. And you know, I think there's been a there's a great sense, I guess, that you can do it differently, you can do it better. So, getting back to that mindset, once you've got that platform of what you believe in and how as a leader you think that you can inspire and keep that spirit buoyant. Um, we're, we're then challenged, I guess, to, to say, okay, well, the collaboration's crucial. How do we do that better? How do we engage students um, and how do we engage each other? You know, the Zoom, for example, is so powerful because you see everyone at the same time, uh, Brady Bunch style, you know, it's, it's um, and without that, you know, I wonder if it would be the same. So online, that facility, you know, without advertising, but that breakout room facility where you can go into smaller groups and so on, you know, I, I'm thinking that, that this, you know, it can change the way you work. Like for my team, our collaboration is a real challenge because we are so disparate in, in distance. And we, we meet, of course, face-to-face, -face, not, not recently, but, you know, that connection is so important. So we've got PL team uh, in our in my in my team, my broader team, our PL team are working on, you know, how can we do this differently? What's the optimum level of session length? Uh, we had a, we had a, um, a a trial of this, and and we said, look, let's do it to anticipate what students might feel. And everyone was, you know, at the end of the day, so draining. Tim, we've got to cut this back. It needs to be shaped better. And you know, even just as late as yesterday, we were talking about as a team, we think we've got it right now, you know, phone breaks for the phone anxious, um, you know, coffee breaks for those that need it, you know, and build that into some short, sharp, punchy things. So 
I don't know, we, we're trying to reimagine how um, our collaboration could be, but I think if, if you've got that attitude and that strength of common belief and, you know, in my team, we spent a lot of t- time and I think really well invested for, for post and pre COVID and during, you know, we, we talk about, you know, inspiring and collaborating, you know, um, and empowering and excelling, you know, a, a, a something that was born out of our team and really has come to the fore in our work uh, together. So, you know, those, those pillars, if you like, of your leadership and your strength of your team, to me, go to underpinning the collaboration that that, that you you naturally assume. And, you know, we, we do that frequently and regularly and, and willingly. And um, it, it, for us, has really meant our communication in COVID has been absolutely red hot. And um, people are across the cutting edge advice and the changing advice. Um, they're comfortable in their work. Our principals are getting good service and, and great currency to what they're hearing. And they're hearing it um, before they're reading about it in the paper or hearing it from some other source. So, um, yeah, so, so piecing all those things together with the comms and the, and the collaboration and the platforms and the, and the mind and the ethic around that as a leader, I think, are, are critical. Yeah. And if Scott and I had the honor of coming with you to one of your schools and post COVID, uh, one of the schools that you know has been on a journey and they're just cooking with gas. It's an amazing learning environment. Great things have been happening. You're so proud of everybody. Well, what will you recommend to that executive at that school or to your director working with you at that school to keep or to get back at it so they don't lose momentum? They don't write off the year as we just sort of get back to it what will you help them do to sustain that change as we go on from here sure uh, john I, I mentioned earlier about our covid task force they've set up these learning platforms learning hubs um uh, this morning I, I was talking to uh the executive director there um about some of the things principals are calling out that is this just a one-off are we going to have access to this in time i think that that work that has been established um, to me seems to be for our system of 2,200 schools across a massive state is going to underpin a lot of the future in terms of a common reference point that will become a familiar way of working. Um, outside of that, of course, you're going to go into schools and they're going to say, hey, uh, Canvas is working really well or I've got this platform. Um, I think we've got a challenge around uh, a commonality of platform perhaps across all of our schools that, that could be um, well placed um, across so many schools and so many budgets. That's, that's always a challenge. Um, but going into a, a, a high performing school in this space, be it primary or, or secondary, I think, I think you'd, be, you'd be really pointing to um, the engagement pieces and really trying to, to map in those, those teachers that have felt very comfortable and done a great job. But, you know, like we had a, a teacher the other day about to retire and um, in her classroom, you know, um, and in her, her thinking and in her interactions, you know, I've got to stay relevant, she says, two weeks from retirement. You know, these students, um, you know, golden words of someone wise and sensible, but across it, you know, but had you just said to her, I've got a good idea for you, Judy, um, how would you think about doing all of this, you know, a month out of retirement, she probably would have um, told you something different. But um, so I think identifying the the successes, John, um, identifying those people that have really uh, pinpointed great strategy and great approaches, um, you know, we as, a, as, a, as an operational directorate, one of the six, um, you know, we're honouring that, that work as well, that keeping that lens on the praise and the recognition and acknowledgement. Um, but I think too, you know, like you go into a classroom, you see great things. There's a great leader standing behind that. There's a leader that allows for that to happen be it resource or be it attitude. Um, you know, I, I, I speak and I'm about today to go into um, different connection points um, with principals. And I, I've made a point, you know, we've got 350 schools. I think I've visited physically in the, in the, in the principal's office, walking the school, seeing classrooms, around about 250 of them um, in my time. And I, I've been in the role 
to to two and a bit years, three years. Um, but but now I'm connecting online with them because um, you know you, you're not that popular coming into that environment at the moment with health and so on. So I've connected online with them, which has been amazing just to see and to hear the strength that they hold, and the and the belief they hold and pride in their in their staff. So. You know, I would bottle that because we know in the cut and thrust of any regular school year or day, that sometimes goes a little to ground with everything else they manage. Um, so that leadership bit, um, the staff and the interaction with each other, you know, people learning from each other, so important. And then you've got that system lens and that system, um, what is the system doing and how can we tap into that? Um, but, you know, uh, the, the other one, behind all this, you know, the faith parents have and, and probably a, a newfound appreciation of teachers and the skill and art and the, and the, the complexity with um, 30. Um, you know, um, we had a student early on who said to their teacher when they were asked to do some work, um, you know, you can't suspend me, sir, if I don't do it in, in jest. And, um, and, and it was that, it was that point that, no, because now that student is flourishing and is the one that is doing the work and sharing the work, um, you know, and, you know, parents are probably the ones at times that feel like they'd love to send their, their child back to school, um, you know, if they're, not, if they're not coping or they're not doing their work. But, you know, we're not, we're not really seeing that. We're seeing parents connect really nicely. We're seeing great online stuff. And I think that connection with parents is, is really been a really positive feature of this. And, you know, parents are, are concerned and, and as well they may be um, at times, but, you know, our system really strong on the hygiene, the health, the, the safety, um, wanting students back in a, in a sensible way. Um, we'll get them back there, connect them back. And, you know, the care that, that, that teachers hold, I think that's the thing that, that, has really been remarkably evident. Not that it was never there, but we have a mantra in our system, every student known, valued and cared for, you know, and, and the first every student for us is what matters. And we have students in out of home care. We have students um, where home is, is a challenge and is not the, the greatest of places. We have others, other students who, you know, just um, desperate to see their friends, but we, we're, we're moving through that world and, and I think we do it with a great strength and vitality um, coming from what we see as possible. Um, so bottling and modelling and sharing that um, and sharing the great stories. Um, we put out a weekly film of all the positives that come our way across our um, operational directorate and, um, you know, it's very uplifting and, and, and enlightening and, you um, gets us all thinking, wow, you know, maybe we could do a bit more of that. So I think the sharing those doors across schools have opened uh, and uh, I would say permanently, you know, fantastic connections. Tim, your, your, your passion's evident. We really appreciate you taking the time. Your, your, your focus on care and commitment and collaboration really, really, I think it resonates with a lot of what we've talked about in the past 17 episodes and appreciate you taking the time to join us. John, um, I think we were going to leave today with a task for our listeners. Yeah, thanks, Scott, and thank you, Tim. That was a very inspirational last few minutes, and we really admire the work you do, your team does, and particularly the great teachers all around, not only New South Wales, all around the world. If anything, from this, the additional appreciation for the hard work, absolutely dedication of their entire lives and beings to the benefit of children has come through. And uh, some parents are going to be really glad when teachers get to do that more in person than online here very soon. I have a task, and you both don't have to do it, but I'll ask that you do it anyway, because we've got to be role models. And besides, no one will know if we do it anyway. Um, I think with the school executives and the leadership team that you run, team Tim, uh, I recommend that people make a list that you helped us with today, Tim, of the kinds of things that actually we're learning during these last few months in this transition and in the current mostly at home era. The appreciation of collaboration of teachers working together, the care and compassion Scott mentioned that you spent a lot of time on today, the really focusing on what is the purpose of schooling and what do we really do when we bring children together? How do we maintain high standards and accomplish the directorate that, that with directions that we have, but do that in flexible ways. You went through a series of 
of really amazing things that we're practicing in this time, actually emphasizing in this time, which are those that we don't want to give back to the hubbub, rush, and normal day-to-day? Which do we want to maintain? Uh, and particularly the one around appreciating our, our educators for the work they do every day. Uh, the inclusion of parents is one we didn't quite touch on today. In some primary classrooms right now, the mom and the, particularly the mom and the child, they're online together in a very amazing learning environment right as we speak. That's pretty amazing. How could we maintain that when the mom's back at work um, and uh, the child's back at school? So if you could make that list, in, charge your executive team members with the rollout of those or the re- remembering that we've been doing that and not losing what we've learned. Because Scott and I believe, Tim, that we've got this chance to hold on to something special. We've been given the gift of time and a different way of doing things. Let's not go back to the way things were. Let's build a new future that really is about the success of every child. Um, We appreciate your skills and the leadership you bring to this region, to this state, to this country. And we admire you and your colleagues all around the world for everything you're doing to keep basically our civilization going in these very, very disruptive times. The fact that schools keep going is extraordinarily refreshing. No matter what, you can go to school. It might look a little different. We might not actually be able to hug each other. This has been episode 17 of We Will Get Through This, and we really appreciate Tim McCallum being with us today. Scott and I welcome you to listen back to the previous 16 episodes on whatever platform you get your entertainment, YouTube, or any of the podcast servers. We look forward to seeing you soon or listening with you soon in our podcast. Scott, thanks. We'll look forward to seeing you again. Thank you, John. Great to see you. Thanks, Tim. We'll have you back on for five more episodes about those (laughs) ideas. Uh, All good. I I thank you very much for the opportunity and uh, great to join you this morning.